This is the OM1 and this is the OM system HLD10 grip. And this is the EM1 Mark III. And this is the Olympus HLD9 grip. So I wanted to do a comparison of these two grips. So first of all, the Olympus HLD9 has a DC port, which you can see here, which means you can power the camera without having any batteries in the grip or in the camera and run the camera. So this is something which is not possible on the OM1 with the HLD10 grip. And the HLD10 grip doesn't have a DC port. So with the OM1 and the HLD10 grip, there's no option to power the camera without having batteries in it, which is something that was possible with the EM1 Mark III and the EM1X because of the DC port that it had. On the OM system HLD10 grip, you can charge the battery in the camera and in the grip using USB-C power. So I can show this quickly. I'm gonna plug in a USB-C cable, which is providing power, and you can see both the lights turn on. Whereas on the EM1 Mark III, with batteries in the grip and in the camera, if I connect USB-C you can see that only the battery in the camera will charge so the grip doesn't even have an orange LED to show when the battery charges because it doesn't charge the battery in the grip and even though the Olympus HLD9 does have a DC port the DC port cannot charge the batteries in the grip or in the camera so one thing I want to mention is that on the EM1X, which I have here, the DC port can charge the batteries in the camera and on the grip. And there's two LEDs here for that, using the DC adapter as well as the USB-C port. So the EM1X, in that sense, is better than both the OM1 with the OM system HLD grip, as well as the EM1 Mark III with the Olympus HLD9 grip. In terms of size, the OM1 is a bigger camera than the EM1 Mark III, and the grip as well is bigger on the OM system HLD10 than it is on the HLD9. And if I compare this to the HLD9 on the bottom part, you can see how much bigger it is. Slightly bigger. I would say the grip on the OM1 is bigger than the previous generation of cameras so the, it's bigger than the HLD9 with the EM1 Mark III. So one of the advantages of this grip is that it will make your landscape grip bigger. But if you look here it actually comes forward so it's not as nice as the HLD9 grip or the EM1X. It's a little bit more uncomfortable because it doesn't sit exactly nicely on your finger. So one of the advantages of adding this grip is that you get a larger grip on the landscape part. So in addition to getting a portrait grip, even on the landscape part, you get a larger grip. So all your fingers should be able to fit easily. And then you also have the portrait grip. So the ergonomics are not ideal. So for example, here you can see that the grip is being cut short. Whereas if it continued all the way down here, it would give you a better hold. Whereas here you can see that your last finger won't get a nice grip. And I think this is because it's based on the design of the previous generation of Olympus cameras, maybe the EM1X, which had a DC port here. Well, on the EM1X, it would have been slightly different, but maybe it's based on that design and that's why they have left it there, but without a DC port. So I'm not sure what the point of this is to curve it in this direction since it doesn't actually add any value and it takes away from the grip. In terms of buttons on the grips, the HLD10 grip for the OM1 has two buttons here, one for adjusting exposure and one for ISO, as well as the shutter button and the front dial and back dial. Whereas on the Olympus HLD9, you have the shutter button, the front dial and the back dial, but no other buttons here on top. So I think that's an advantage for the HLD10 in comparison to the HLD9. 
on the back of these cameras and grips, there's two function buttons on the back of the Olympus HLD9, whereas on the HLD10, you only have one button for back button autofocusing. So depending on how you use the cameras, you might prefer two buttons here as opposed to one button here and two buttons on front. On the HLD9, you have the arrow buttons and the OK button, which you can use to navigate the menu. Whereas that doesn't exist on the HLD10, but instead on the HLD10, you have the joystick. So in my opinion, the joystick is better than the arrow pads because in portrait mode, you can't really navigate the menu. So the arrow pads and the OK button is less relevant than the joystick. Whereas with the joystick, you might use it to move your autofocus points unless you move your autofocus points with the arrow pads, in which case it's just a case of preference what you prefer. Both the HLD9 and the HLD10 have a lock lever, so you can lock the functionalities on the grip. And both of them have this lock wheel for screwing the grip into the camera. And both of these lock wheels are really difficult to use because they're really thin, so you have to exert a lot of force. On the HLD10, there's no clear labeling. So the labeling exists, but it's black. Whereas on the HLD9, you can see it in white. It says lock and the direction which you have to turn it. In terms of the material used for the grips, the HLD9 for Olympus EM1 Mark III definitely feels a lot better and solid. Whereas the one on the OM1, which is the HLD10, it feels really plasticky and it actually feels like cheap plastic. I don't know if you can hear this sound as opposed to the sound here. It's difficult to say exactly why it feels cheap, but this feels like cheap plastic, whereas this feels like more expensive plastic. And I'm not sure how to describe the feeling apart from being able to touch it. It feels a lot more plasticky than the previous generation of Olympus grips. So it definitely feels cheaper. A lot cheaper actually, particularly some of these things like the lock lever. And in relation to the material used, even though the HLD9 for the EM1 Mark III is smaller, it's actually heavier. So without the batteries and the plastic part for the terminal cover, it weighs 255 grams, whereas the HLD10, which is bigger, actually weighs 242 grams. So it's marginally lighter despite being bigger, which goes to say something about the quality of material to, that's been used in the camera. Anyway, maybe this comparison is pointless since these grips are made for different cameras, but I think it is interesting to be aware of the changes to the power battery holders since Olympus Photo Division was sold off to JIP that operates under the OM Digital Solution brand. And I just want to say that in terms of feel and functionality, I think the EM1X is better than both the HLD9 and HLD10 when it comes to functionality as well as the feel and ergonomics of it. So this is the EM1X and the dials, the buttons, for example, with the lock lever here, you have you have the ability to lock it, but you also have a custom lock option, which you can go into the menu and decide which buttons should be locked or not. And the charging of batteries, which is possible with both a DC adapter as well as USB-C. And you have two buttons here on top. You have the back button here. You have the joystick and the buttons here. So I think if Ergonomics is a priority. The EM1X is far superior to both the OM1 and EM1 Mark III. But obviously, ergonomics is not everything, and you might want the features that these cameras have. In terms of comparing the HLD9 grip with the EM1X, I think the grip on the EM1X is far superior to the grip on the EM1 Mark III, and that's for both landscape and portrait directions. So if you can see here, 
this is the EM1X and this is the EM1 Mark III. You can see how much bigger the grip is on the EM1X. And also when you look at it from a portrait perspective, you have the shutter button, the dials, and you also have two buttons here on the front. And on the back, you have the auto exposure lock button and the dial, and then you have a joystick. And I think the joystick is more important than the arrow pads. Also, the lock lever has three options. So you have a custom lock where you can actually adjust which buttons you want to lock or not. So I would say the portrait grip on the EM1X is far superior to the HLD9 on the EM1 Mark III. There are a few features that the EM1 Mark III has and the EM1X doesn't have and vice versa. So for example, the EM1 Mark III, I think can take uh, 10,000 pictures when it comes to creating time lapses, whereas on the EM1X is 1,000. Also on the EM1 Mark III, if I remember correctly, you can save your custom mode settings for your custom mode dials to get updated automatically when you change the settings. And I think you couldn't do this on the EM1X. And also the tracking and human face and eye detection is marginally better on the EM1 Mark III. But then the EM1X has subject detection, so it can you know, identify birds or trains and planes and that kind of stuff. So that's a different feature that the EM1X has that the EM1 Mark III doesn't have. But overall, in terms of grip size and ergonomics the em1x is definitely far superior but it is also bigger as well so you should be able to see that here in terms of the width of the grip and the thickness and here as well so with the hld9 grip and dc power you can run the camera quite effectively in terms of plugging and unplugging it as well as running the camera without any batteries but you can't charge the batteries using the DC port on the EM1 Mark III. With USB-C you can charge the battery in the camera but if you have the grip attached to the camera and you plug in USB-C for power delivery, power delivery won't work. And also if you're video recording with this setup then using USB-C to switch power source isn't going to work because the camera with the grip cannot support USB-C power delivery. And even if you take off the grip, the video recording will be stopped. So there's a lot of peculiarities around the functionality of providing power to the EM1 Mark III with USB-C or the DC port. Whereas on the OM1, there's no DC port, so all of those options are irrelevant. The only thing you have is USB-C. So you can use USB-C to charge the batteries and you can use it to provide power delivery for the camera, but you can't run the camera without batteries in it. If you want to do video recording and you plug in USB-C power delivery. In fact, let me demonstrate this. So I'm switch on the camera. Okay, so I'm gonna start video recording. So you can see the red frame. So video recording is happening. And I'm gonna plug in USB-C for power delivery. So video recording seems to continue. Both of these lights are on, which means the batteries are being charged and the battery icon has disappeared, which means the camera is using USB power. So if I unplug USB-C, okay, it goes back to the grip. So this was a problem for both the EM1 Mark III and the EM1X. If you were doing video recording and you plugged in USB-C, video recording would stop. Whereas on the OM1, this seems to have been fixed. So you can plug in USB-C and unplug it during video recording without any problems. So as long as you have at least 10% power in the batteries, you should be able to use USB-C for power delivery on the OM1. So anyway, let me know if you have any questions about either of these grips or if you want me to demonstrate something 
or compare something or talk through some of the features in more detail.